Hello, pre-algebra students. We're ready for Chapter 9, Section 1, where we're going to talk about powers and exponents. An expression like 5 times 5 times 5 with equal factors can be written using an exponent. Exponents tell us how many times a number is used as a factor. A number that is expressed using an exponent is called a power. The number that is multiplied is called the base. So 5 times 5 times 5 equals the power of 5 to the third power, where 5 is our base and 3 is our exponent. Okay? And 5 is the factor. It's being factored 5 times 5 times 5 three times. So write each expression using an exponent. So 9 is going to be our base, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4 times, factored 4 times, so it's to the 4th power. Here, be careful, negative 1 is in parentheses, and negative 1 is being multiplied times itself 2 times. So our base is negative 1, and our exponent is 2, so the power is negative 1 to the 2nd power. All right, let's keep going and write each one as an exponent. We have W multiplied times itself, one, two, three, four, five times. Watch out for these parentheses. That's a grouping symbol. It means that 5x plus 1 is married, and so they're living in this house built by parentheses, and it's being multiplied times itself twice. Now, 1 half is only written once, but x is being multiplied 1, 2, 3, 4 times, and y is being multiplied 3 times. So it's 1 half x to the fourth, y to the third. Since powers represent repeated multiplication, They must be included in the order of operations. We must include powers in our order of operations. If you remember, it's P for parentheses, and then we said E for exponents. Multiplication and division comes next, addition and subtraction. That's our order of operations. And we're emphasizing here the E for exponents. So let me give you an example of how we would take care of exponents first. If, it, if we had the problem 2 plus 3 squared, order of operation says you leave the 2 plus and you take care of your exponents, and 3 times 3 is 9. Then 2 plus 9 gives us an answer of 11. What a lot of people will do, the wrong way to do it, is they get in a hurry and they say 2 plus 3, which is 5, and then they square 5 and they get 25. And there's a big difference between 11 and 25, and 25 is not the correct answer. You don't add, you multiply. You take care of your exponents first. That's step number two. Then you can take care of addition or multiplication or whatever else is going to happen. Okay? Let's look at a word problem. North American hockey rinks. This is for my hockey players. It's built according to the National Hockey League specifications. Evaluate each expression to find these dimensions. The distance from the goal line to the closest blue line is 2 to the 6th power feet. That means it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 6 times, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you can do this on your calculator, or you could work it out and say, and 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 gives us the product of 64. And so it's 64 feet. That's what I would do if I didn't have a calculator. All right, then the length of the rink is 2 to the third times 5 to the second. So it's 2 times 2 times 2. So take care of your exponents before we multiply 5 times 5. So order of operation says exponents first, and 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8, and 5 times 5 is 25. And now we're ready to multiply 8 times 25, and that gives us 200 feet. 
and as we're getting ready for Algebra 1 next year, we're often going to have to substitute the values of x and y. So x squared minus y to the third, where x, instead of being x, is going to be negative 5. Notice my parentheses so I don't forget the whole x is being squared. And so that means the negative 5 is being squared. If you get in a hurry and you just write negative 5 squared, only the 5 is being squared, and that's incorrect. So very carefully, using um, my parentheses so I know exactly what I am substituting, minus y in place of y, it's y to the third, in place of y I'm going to substitute a 2. So I got my negative 5 from here and my 2 from there, and negative times negative makes positive 25 minus 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So the result of this is going to be 25 minus 8, which gives us 17. So be very careful. Parentheses are your friend. Whenever you're using substitution, use parentheses to replace then um, the x or the y. All right, let's keep on trucking for the sake of time, and let's talk about prime factorization. A prime number is a number, or a whole number, that has exactly two unique factors, one and itself. So let's talk about some prime numbers. Here's some examples of prime numbers. Seven is a prime number, three is a prime number, 13 is prime, um, oh, I'm kind of at a loss. Let's see, what's another prime number? 17 comes to mind, 23 comes to mind. Um, I'm seeing a pattern forming here. So prime numbers, nothing else can be multiplied to give you that number except for itself and one. So a composite number is a whole number that has more than the two factors of itself and one. So for example, oh by the way, two is prime. Uh, a composite number would be four, because it can be four times one is four, and also two times two. So it has more than just the two factors. Five would be prime. Six would not be prime. It would be a composite, because not only is six times one equal to six, but so is two times three. 8, of course, is not prime, it's composite, because we can say 8 times 1, we can say 2 times 4 to get 8, and so on and so forth. So most numbers are composite, but there are a few that are prime. So let's determine whether these are composite or prime. Pause the video and try it yourself, and then check your answer with my answer. I hope you figured out that 31 is prime because it's just 31 times 1 and 36 is composite. It has many multiples. Besides 36 times 1, we have um, 18 times 2 and 12 times 3 and 9 times 4 and of course 6 times 6. So there are many multiples of 36, many factors. When a composite number is expressed as the set of prime factors, it is called the prime factorization of the number. One way to find this is to use a factor tree. Okay, so I listed the factors of 36, but I didn't necessarily try to break it down to its prime factorization. So let me show you how to do prime factorization using a factor tree of 56. Of course, we can start with 1 times 56, and then we can start with 2. 2 goes into 56, 28, and 2 goes into 28, and 2 is a prime number, by the way. 2 goes into 28, 14, and 14 is not prime because 2 goes into 14, 7, and 7 is prime. So the prime factorization of 56 is 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. That would be the prime factorization. We've 
broken it down to all of its factors until they're all prime. That's called prime factorization. All right, let me give you one to practice. You try to break down 64 using a factor tree and write it in its prime factorization form. So I'll be checking that tomorrow um, to see that you're listening and working through this video. All right, a monomial is an expression that is a number, a variable, or a product of numbers and variables. So a number like four, that's a monomial. A variable like x, that's a monomial. Mono meaning one, one term. And believe it or not, 4x is also called a monomial because it says it's an expression that's a number, a variable, or a product. And 4x means four times x. So those are all mon monomials. And I could even say four times x times y. And that makes a monomial. So here are some examples of monomials. Now let me give you some examples that are not monomials. Let's change our color. Not a monomial would be 4 plus x because it's not the product. It's the addition. It's the sum. Um, if I made 4x, that's a monomial. But if I said 4x plus 5, then that becomes not a monomial. And then, of course, if it was 4x plus a variable, anytime you have a plus or a minus sign, it could even be 4x minus y. All of those are not monomials. Okay? Now, to factor something or a number, to factor a number means to write the number as the product of all of its factors. Remember, we called uh, what we did in example two the prime factorization. So we rewrote 56 as a product of all of its prime factors. So let's see if we can factor. It says here to factor each monomial. So that means these are, let's find a fun color. How about purple? We hadn't used purple. They're monomials because they're multiplication. They're products of each other. So 16, if we tried to break down 16, we could say that's um, 2 times 8 which is 2 times 2 times 4, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So 16 breaks down to completely factor it out as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And then, of course, p squared is p times p, and q to the fourth is q times itself four times. So that would be the factored form of 16p squared q to the fourth. Now let's try um, negative 21. We know it's negative 1 because of the negative sign. And multiples of 21 other than 21 and 1 are 3 and 7. And both of those are prime numbers. So we've got that completely factored to its prime factorization form. And then x times x because it's x squared. So just twice and y is only once. So that would be the factored form of the monomial, negative 21 x squared y. Let me leave one for you to practice just to make sure you're catching on to completely factoring things to their prime factorization form. Let's do negative 72 m to the fifth n to the third. <clears throat> Let me check that one tomorrow to make sure you know how to factor a monomial completely. Let's review a monomial is any term that does not have an addition or subtraction sign. It's just one term. Mono means one. To factor things down to their prime factorization, you have only prime numbers left when you have them all the way factored out. Um, a composite number has more than just itself and one as factors. And, and when Obeying the order of operations, you take care of your exponents before you add or subtract. So we have to take care of our exponents. And always be careful when substitute, using substitution to use your parentheses. That does it for today. Have a beautiful day.